Hello, hello. So we meet again. Today I want to talk about a few different subjects, but mainly about um, the wood chips. So I al already made a video on wood chips, but I wanted to get a little bit more into details about the um, origin of the uh, Ramiel chip wood fertility protocol and the um, the key that unlocks this um, wonderful uh, fertility, the key to the success. So, the originator of this um, technique is uh, Dr. Gilles Lemieux. Gilles Lemieux is French. It's actually French-Canadian from Quebec, the province of Quebec. Now, that's where I'm from. You see, if you hear a little accent in my, uh, in my voice, in my, uh, is because, and is because my first language is actually Quebecois. We say Quebecois because we're not really French, you know. French are from France. They speak French. The French Canadian, the Quebecois, they speak Quebecois. It's like Americans and, uh, British, you know. The, uh, the English speak English, the Americans speak American. <laughs> the Mexicans speak like Mexican and the Spanish uh, speak Spanish. It's, it's very closely related, but it's not the same. <laughs> so anyway, Gilles Lemieux is a Quebecois and he was a professor at the Université de Laval. That's in uh, Quebec City. And he was in the forestry department. When he stumbled in his research, uh, on the um, the fertility aspects of the forest, you know, everybody in the forestry who are into soils are pretty much like NPK driven, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, NPK. They measure NPK everywhere, and then uh, they make a career out of it. But this guy was like asking himself, no, 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 there has to be something else that drives the fertility of the forest of the. These trees are big. This is like, there's some nutrient cycling going on. How, what is it? What is the key to the fertility? And then, uh, he decided to, uh, just do that in, in his career. And he, um, he started like hypoth, like hypo, <laughs> hypothesize, hypothesizing, <laughs> um, hypothesis, right? Hypothesis testing that, um, the fertility may be actually contained in the, the branches because if you go in the forest and if you were if you put like if you were to observe a tree and how much of the branches fall like during its lifetime you would be amazed because the leaves fall and we know the leaves are cycling you know are nu cycling nutrients but the branches also fall a lot and he was like what if it's the branches and he started studying that now, a small branch like this is called une ramille. The scientific name for a branch, a small branch is a ramille, which, um, which is why he called it, uh, bois fragmenté ramial, you know, like ramial chipped wood. This is ramial means small branch. And so he, he set up experiments where he would, he would collect the small branches of all of the different species of trees, all the different conifers and all the, dis, dis, uh, the deciduous trees. And then he would pile them up. He would um, let them decompose and analyze the chemistry makeup of, the, uh, of what resulted from the decomposition process. The pH, nitrogen, all of the chemicals. That, and he, he just went full on. He looked at everything, you know. Then he, uh, he realized that in that process of, there was a fungi growing. And let me show you this fungi. And this is the key. Okay. Now, I'm not sure the camera will pick this up properly, but in here, let me try to at least get some of this. You see, there's a, um, 
this stringy white thing here. Whoop, but I. This stringy white thing here. That's a fungi. And you could see, well, maybe you can't. But here everywhere, there's like this white mat, stringy mat growing everywhere here. It's all in here. I don't know how well this camera does here. I have, this is a, I'm using a phone. I used to have another camera and I knew that it had very good zooming capacities. I don't know about this, you know? It seems like it doesn't zoom very well. I wish it would. Maybe I just don't know how to use it. So these, this fungi is called Basiomycetes. There are two, two major kinds of this, uh, these Basiomycetes involved uh, in the uh, breakdown of the, uh, of the wood, of the ramiel, of the ram, rami, of the ramiel branch. There's the, uh, what they call the brown rot and the white rot. You see, this is the white rot. The reason, well, because it's white, you know? But the, see, the white rot, Basiomycetes, they decompose the deciduous. If this was mostly conifers, like pine, branches broken down, it would be brown, a brown Basiomycetes. So it's imp so you. Uh, I'll try to get to why it's important that uh, that it's um, deciduous and that it's white. Okay. So he then he then said, well, what if I take these branches and I chip them? That would increase the surface, you know, uh, the available surface of the wood, and maybe that would that that would uh, assist the fungi in their process and breaking down this stuff which he 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 then like real realized pretty quickly that this breakdown was creating the nutrition that was that was um, available for the trees you know and so um he started chipping this so he would go in the forest and he would take branches from all of the different trees all the conifers all the deciduous pile them up chip them and then spread the wood chips in the forest and then he would spread the forest, the, the chips of the different trees in different stands. So he would mix things up. Like he would say, if this is a um, an oak stand where there's mostly oak, I'm going to take the oak branches and I'm going to uh, chip them and spread them here. And then I'm going to take them and I'm going to put them in a pine stand. And I'm going to do the inverse. I'm going to take the pine wood chips, ramule wood chipped wood, and I'm going to spread that in the oak stand, and then I'm going to follow that, and I'm going to, then he even tried putting in, planting in some trees, putting in some seeds, and, and he, like, I mean, his whole research career was doing that, and then measuring everything out of it, and he ended up um, applying his knowledge to create, okay, so he ended up bringing this information to the world of agriculture okay so he said wait a minute his if a lot of the soils that were growing food used to be forests you know um, like when they uh in the amazonian forest they cut down the forest and then they they burn and then they grow uh crops there you know uh then then the forest must have been a very important player in creating the soil on this planet, the soil on which we uh, we uh, grow. He, he said that's the key to uh, to bring a sustainable form of agriculture. We need to link forestry and so agriculture. he went to uh, poor uh, poorer countries like Republic Dominican. He went to Africa, and there he found some allies because he found people who didn't really have the the technology the the money to buy all this huge equipment all these fertil these chemical fertilizers all of this stuff that we use in agriculture they were like wait a minute you're saying we just need to get the branches from our forest and we could do something to grow some crop and he's like yeah they were like tell us more <laughs> so he implemented some trials in republic dominican and places like that where they would get a wood chipper 
and they would have the locals and all the people in the research uh, departments and the universities and professors get on board and government get on board and they would chip branches. They would get the forestry department on board and they would chip branches and then they would do what he, some trials, what he thought was the right thing. And the right thing was for him was to take these ramule chipped wood and to put a certain thickness over the over the uh, the fields and then to till that in and then to inoculate with the with the fungi because if you just get fresh ramule chipped wood there might not be lots of uh, basiomycetes on it so you got to like take the basiomycetes spread them on top of the uh, the soil in which the chips are mixed and then you will have the key that will unlock the fertility contain the energy contained in the chip in the wood you see because this wood it comes from a small branch right like all of this here all of this wood comes from small branches okay now small branches the if you study um wood chemistry small branches don't have the same chemistry at all than the uh the bark or the uh, trunk okay the heartwood the the trunk of the tree is uh, is cellulose and it's 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 a different it's like the small branch contains a different um, more lignin what's called lignin and a different kind of lignin there's different kinds of lignin and uh, it contains also like all the juices, like the um, fresh juices, uh, the sap, you know, it's like has a lot more of it in there. It, and um, and uh, that lignin that's inside of the, um, the branch, the ramule branch, is, um, is, is made of what they call aromatic uh, molecules, which like, let me try to, an aromatic molecule is like a uh, hexagon. And there's an electron in the middle that that goes around and that binds the different. It's like the, it's like each each angle of the uh, hexagon is a carbon, and the carbon the car, carbon to carbon bond is a strong bond. But if it has an electron going around and solidifying that bond, it makes this molecule very strong. That's where resides the energy. Like, okay, this is how nature did it. Nature took the sun. Where is the sun? You can't see the sun? Where's the, why the sun does not come? Take the sun, that powerful energy, the tree stalks it into the wood and it takes the carbon in the air and it creates this very energetic molecule caught and then all these molecules they all stack together and it creates lignin lignin is the component of uh of the uh the wood in the the ramule uh branch with cellulose and hemicellulose these, and uh, you know this energy that's in here can create and sustain life but only if it can be unlocked it has to be broken down and it turns out bacteria can't break it most fungi can't break it this is very hard to break okay there's no enzymes in in nature that do it well i mean yes but it comes from this basiomycetes the basiomycetes is the only living thing in nature that can break down the lignin the aromatic bonds and free that energy to the world once that energy is freed to the world then there's a cascade of events that occur where one some uh, some living being will say uh oh i got this energy i'm doing something and then another one says uh oh i got that one i'm doing something with that and it goes and it trickles down all the way to like when you 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 uh you move you move some of this stuff here you have like hundreds and thousands of small beetles going everywhere you because they're they're uh, chomping on whatever wood they could chomp on and uh, they also have gut bacteria that assist them in their work <laughs> it's interesting the this whole gut bacteria thing um probiotics and all that they also have that you know the termites like uh, the beetles 
they also have uh, other living beings associated inside their guts too like then uh this, it's not the same as us you know but anyways uh then this here you have something eating that then then um then the the beetles uh well, they will poo and something will eat their poo where well, maybe some beetles die and something eat that then you got the uh, millipedes and you got this and that and the other and 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 the bacteria and this and that and the other and then after a short while what you got is soil and then that becomes nutrition for the trees and the plants so uh, his trials in Republic Dominican in Africa and the poorer places they were successful he was like capable of growing corn tomato all the conventional crops that these people wanted to grow that they had to normally buy fertilizer or forestry cow department on your side you're gonna get a lot of chipped wood let me tell you that in uh in canada they still do this they um they burn it you know <laughs> they uh they cut down the forest and all the branches and everything that's laying down there they call it uh debris they pile it up and then they burn it Poop, you know <laughs> Instead of like using it uh, um, for sustainable agriculture, but see the other these countries they did it and they found that they could grow grow things. But there's 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 a process to it. You know, the first year you're you're not going to grow a lot, so you might have to amend with compost because the first year it's just starting off the process. And while the process is uh, kicks kicks in gear, you actually see a. Uh, a decrease in in the nitrogen availability it's just, that's just the first year though see but that's what a lot of the people don't get they're like you can't put wood chips uh the nitrogen goes down because carbon to nitrogen this that and the other and they're not wrong but the thing is that science often does very short research trials it's because it's a master's degree or a PhD student who's actually doing the study and they only have two years or three years or four years and they only have one year of field work or maybe two, three years of field work and that's it. <laughs> Call it quits. Analyze that and, and uh, speculate. But um, he had years like, you know, and so he found that um, year one nitrogen goes down, but year two it goes right back up and year three it's like you got a spike of that. You got nitrogen now is starting to show up. Year four is still there. Year five, you got for increased fertility. Year six, and then um, slowly it starts to go back down again. So you, so you put some wood chips, and you don't need that much. I think it's like an inch, an inch and a half, and you plow that in. And for the next five years, six years, you don't need to fertilize. You could grow crop. Okay, so. That started to make babies and now France is actually on board. If you go, well, I mean, if you speak French, you could go to the uh, YouTube and uh, look at what the French are doing. They've completely embraced this. My God, France is like on board with this stuff. Woo. <laughs> but um, you look in the U.S. I am, um, you know, I've been I've been doing this for a long time, you know, and I've been studying this for a long time. I'm a biologist. I'm a, I'm a forest ecologist. This is my, I'm also a professional in this field. Um, and I tried, like, I wanted to be useful and helpful. And I do my own little research here, um, myself. But, uh, I, I, I tried. I looked at all the universities in the United States and Canada. I figured, you know, hey, I'll go talk to one of these professors, see if I could, you know, collaborate, do a project, you know, together and stuff like that. There's nothing can't find any professor anywhere that is uh, interested in this kind of stuff and yet we they all talk about sustainable agriculture sustainable forestry everyone talks about it and this thing here he also found it reduces the the need uh, for water and so water is also a very precious commodity and especially now with the quote climate change you know or <laughs> that is going on they're all talking about like how can we grow uh, genetically modified crops that are be drought resistant you know because we don't have we have to conserve water but uh this this increases fertility and uh it increases uh it reduces the need for water it this is like this is it you know as far as if we really wanted to to do some sustainable work because forests for the most part you, you go in any country you go to estonia russia you go anywhere you know you have forestry departments you could use just the the shrubs like here growing around your uh 
your property you, you know you could you could even just like put yourself a, like a crop of fast growing deciduous and just like every year you just grow it for so you could trim the branches every year <laughs> and um anyways so okay so that's the key i wanted i really wanted to address this and um but here's the thing like okay you get you chip some woods and you're like where do i get the basio mycetes right well, you could go in your backyard in a forest or bring uh, some pails, go out to the state park or somewhere, find a deciduous stand, collect the first few inches, you know, try to find some if you could see it, you know, if you could see it, if it's actually like in its, um, it's this, in the state where it makes these mats, you know, because it probably also sporulates and it, you know, probably also ha has some uh, life in its life cycle. Uh, where you can't actually see it with your eyes, but it's still there. So collect the first, like some some of the top soil there, and then come and spread that in your wood chips in your wood chip pile, or if uh, and uh, till that into your soil. Or you could use this as mulch if you're patient enough. It'll create some uh, growing conditions, you know. And you could mix that in a bit too in the top layers and stuff. You ex you really need to experiment um, with this. But you really have to inoculate with the basiomycetes. This is the key. This is the key. Okay. If you don't, then it, um, you're you're not using this whole fungal system. Okay. Because this is not. You have to get out of the composting mind frame. This is not compost. Compost is bacterial driven. And it, you know, that's why it requires the heat, the bacteria, like they, they heat up the compost pile and then it breaks down everything, right? This is fungal driven. It's completely different. And, um, it creates soil. It, this is a, a, a it's called aggradation. This creates soil. Compost is not, is not, when you, Put compost on your garden. Uh, you're amending. You're bringing in hummus, humus. In you're just you're amending your soil. This is creating soil. This is how the soil on the planet was created. And what you're doing is saying, okay, uh, I'm going to be using the, this 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 force of of the of nature, and I'm going to use the insight of this Dr. Lemure and his years of research. And I'm going to uh, experiment with it in my own garden, okay? So, let me just put, cue you in on some little research, R&D, that I'm doing here. This is a secret between us. I'm trying to figure out how can I grow basiomycetes, okay? Because I don't... I don't want to go out in the forest and collect the top soil and just try to spread that. I want to have a system where I have um, an area where I'm, I've created some conditions where this is optimized and it's growing and it is uh, very available for me to be able to use in my garden. So I could really have as much of this as I want. Now I'm also, keep this between us here. I'm also thinking of a way that I could probably like sell this, you know, because if I could come up with a formula, a way of doing this, and uh, this could be like an inoculator, like I, we could have ourselves for all the people who are, are getting into the sustainability of uh, gardening and who want to move away from animal manure, who want to move away from all sorts of, of fish compost, of, of compost, because it's hard to source. Let me tell you something. If you want to do organic gardening and you got a, a significant garden and you want to get organic compost, you're going to look in the yellow pages and you're going to try to find someone who's going to have organic compost for you. Good luck. The dairy farms, not a lot of them are organic and they, you pick up the dairy, uh, the, the poo from the dairy uh, farm. It's, you get the, you, you truck that into your garden. You have piles and piles of that. Like you, you, yeah, sure. There's some people that have good relationships with these farmers, but not everyone uh, can find good organic cow manure or chicken manure. For the most part, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's in demand and there's a, there's a lot, there's lots of racket 
racketeering going on in that department. They, uh, the USDA on their uh, uh, National Organic Program, they have a, a section on fraud advisory and and uh, a huge chunk of the fraud going on right now in organic is the fake organic compost that are being delivered by truckloads to all of these organic farmers and they're spreading this on their land thinking they're putting organic compost but it's not and when the scam is discovered some people have been putting this on their land for 10 15 years and they're like ah oh, my soil is toxic you're saying to me it was it was human manure or it was fake chicken manure that was came from the big industries in Mexico and <laughs> transferred to the United States under false labels and they're like, yes, yeah, sorry about that. Uh, we didn't, we, we law, we didn't keep our eye on the ball. But you know, see, uh, people don't lose their organic certification because it's not their fault. But it means that all the food that people have been buying was actually like not organic, and uh, the soil is contaminated, and it'll take years to uh, decontaminate it. And then the farmer doesn't actually have any more sources now. And then the racketeering keeps going and just hiding its head under different regulations. Anyways, um, if the world becomes a little bit more enlightened, um, they're going to start to embrace this uh, Ramiel Chip Wood stuff and uh, it'll catch on like it's doing in the poorer countries in France. And the United States is a bit hard because the lobby of the big ag here, they have the government in their pockets and this, that, and the professors and the extension service in their pockets. And so... But, you know, like people uh, like you and I, we could do it. And so um, if someone gets wood chips and they don't have um, a way to inoculate it, then I would like to be able to provide a very, very efficient inoculation like a source for people. OK, so I'm doing some r and I'm just in the R right now. The D will come later. And if you have any ideas and you want to participate, just let me know. Hey, if you're a professor in a university and you're thinking that sucks, I want to do something uh in this, you know, I'll, I'll I'll come meet you. You know, we could do some research together. It's like I've been asking for this for a long time, but um, it's just there's just nobody out there. So it's great. Yeah, that's no, what I wanted no to pesticides, say about no herbicides, that. no fungicides. People, check it out. Sacred agriculture, sacred gardening, keepinginthefloor.com. Take care.